I have here two foot pedals that I've acquired. The first I got over a decade ago with an electronic piano. The other one I bought in the past couple years from SparkFun. Both of these are simple switches. They're not pressure sensitive. It's just on or off. And they're used the same way that a real foot pedal would be on a piano. You'll see here, this is one of the larger audio jacks, sort of like a large microphone that plugs into the audio device and it can read whether this is open or closed and decide to do something based on that. Well, I want to use these in anything. Basically, I want to get rid of this interface, redo the cables and clean up the internals a bit to use them as switches, just regular old switches in anything, such as connecting to an Arduino, which can then be connected to a computer. So to disassemble them, this one is a simple foot pedal, it just has screws on the back and you can get into the internals. This one is a little more interesting. If we look at the front of this one again, it has a push button, so this back of it is just closed. But this one, the entire case shifts, and as you can see, this screw is actually a pivot. This screw and these screws are holding the back on, but this screw is actually just a pivot. It's controlling how much it can open and close, and it's spring-loaded. So here's the first one open, and it's basically the same as a membrane keyboard. You'll see this kind of thing if you open up a game controller. You have, and I can zoom in a bit here, you have two conductive spots with a gap between them, and this little button here is also conductive. When you press down on the rubber, plastic, whatever button, the conductive part here makes contact with both halves of these, and completes the circuit. I have no idea what this is. This is blurry, but it says 400 ohms. I measured it. It's not 400 ohms, but it doesn't do anything. It's not part of the circuit. It's just there, so I don't know. Anyway, as you can see, it's just the two ends are soldered on here and can detect the closed circuit. The other one is more interesting. It's not a membrane. It's a physical switch. This is the one that pivots. See here? This one that pivots, as you close the entire thing, as it pivots shut by you stepping on it, the lid pushes this physical button, and it's just got the two wires crossed over it, or crossed across it, and here you can see the spring loading. This little nub in here and nub in here, that's where the spring goes. It's slightly raised so that when it's assembled, the spring doesn't slide from side to side. This holds the spring in place here. So two different mechanisms. It's kind of interesting. And then I'm replacing it with this stranded speaker wire I got from the hardware store. The benefit of this, first of all, is it looks cool. Also, you've got one copper and one tinned just for, it's just cosmetic. But I like it because I think of this as red for the power and then silver as black for the circuit ground. And the benefit of this is it's nice and flexible. These are joined by plastic, so you can split it. You can just, you know, s separate these apart, and you tear them as short or long as you want to separate the wires. And, of course, it's on a spool, so you make it as long as you want. So I made it so that it would easily reach across an entire room. It's a simple switch, so there's certainly not going to be any significant losses simply from wire length. So this is after I simply used a soldering iron to remove the old wire and soldered on the new. So as you can see, I split the two apart a little bit and then soldered them on, and I did the same here on the other end. So I just replaced the wires, and then I also did this. I tinned them. These ends are just exposed copper stranded, but I, I basically rubbed them with solder so that they're nice and solid now. So they're easy to work with, they don't fray. You can just shove them into a screw terminal or something. So that was the easy one. This one was a little more difficult. As you can see, I ended up removing this little hook that was here holding the wire on, because it didn't seem necessary to me. It, it's a little loose. I might ought to put a little rubber or hot glue here to hold it, but as long as I'm not yanking on the thing by the cord, it's fine. So I just soldered the wire to the two terminals, and there you go. And again, I put solder on the ends of here so it's not just frayed. And then I reassembled them, and this one, which you remember is these two contact pads, the final version is reading 17 ohms, which is perfectly fine. It's only sending essentially a digital signal, a binary signal. It's an open or a closed circuit. So 17 ohms is not going to do anything. We're going to be able to read the signal just fine. And then the other one I reassembled is only 0.5 ohms. It's half an ohm, which is actually within the error range of my meter. Some of, some of this resistance is actually just my probes, because these are custom probes as well. But the difference, I think, 
is the fact that this is the, the membrane material, or the, the conductive material, and then the membrane here that pushes down. That's, I think, where the resistance is coming from, whereas this one is just a straight button. It's just metal to metal to metal. So I think that's why I'm getting such low resistance. So if it matters, this one's better, but it doesn't matter. And then here's the final versions, closed up, with these two ends on each of them, ready to be put into screw terminals. And, like I said, the nice thing about this speaker wire, if for whatever reason I need to separate these two to have the one wire and the other wire going to wildly different places, I can just rip them apart. They'll just peel apart. It's not going to get through the insulation, the rubber, plastic, whatever insulation. They're just going to separate as much as I need. Of course, you can't get them back together again if you do that, but, you know, good enough. And that's all. So I was simply able to open up these switches and reconfigure them to my taste, replacing the wires with longer ones and getting rid of the connectors, and now these will go in anything. And if I use screw terminals, they'll go in and out and in and out, and I can reuse these forever. So in another video, I'm going to be doing an Arduino project that allows you to plug a bunch of switches like this into the Arduino, which will connect to a PC, and you could read the Arduino to have any device like this that connects to screw terminals to control your PC. That'll be cool. Until then, I'll be seeing you.